You'll have questions, we have answers. This is Jane Muller. And this is Ken Muller. Welcome to our show, all about real estate with Ken and Jane. Uh, today, Jane, we are going to talk about the, th- the top three questions that sellers ask uh, when you're ready to sell the house. What's the most important three questions um, you have to ask of, you know, when you want to sell the home? Yes. And um, last week we covered the, um, uh, the top three factors if you should sell or not. And this week we're going to talk, talk about it once you decided you're ready to sell and uh, what are you going to do next. All right. So you ready? Drum roll. Da, yeah. da, 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 da. <laughs> the, the numero uno is what is the home worth or what is the market value of the home or what should I list the home for, right? I guess we can sum it up. That's the price is the number one factor that everyone who's listing their home wants to know. Right, yes. that's a very important yes. part of any anything. Right, the money, how much they're going to list it for, what's the market value, um, and then it brings up the questions. So we can let's break it down a little bit. So when a seller comes to you and they say, "Well, um, you know, I live on one twenty three Main Street, and uh, the home on one twenty eight Main Street in my neighbor's house, a couple of homes down, uh, sold three months earlier, and it sold for six hundred fifty thousand. Therefore, you know, my home has a newer roof; it has it's a little bit bigger. Therefore, I should get seven hundred thousand. Um, that's you've heard that story many, many times, and, and it may almost uh, uh, oh, well, yeah, every time. because you know, everybody's always comparing themselves to the Joneses, right? That's you know, right. Uh, and uh, so, uh, I mean. Uh, uh, once again, right? What you the example the example you just gave, um, you know, it, it have a lot of element to it. Number one, you mentioned uh, the the house down the street, a few doors down, sold three months ago. In three months, there's a there could be a huge change in the market, right? A lot of time, seller asked me, owner asked me, how, Jane, how much do you think my house worth? And uh, that's very tough question. If you ask me how much your home worth is, could be how much replace value, which is your insurance company on your insurance policy, uh, how much to take to replace. And uh, uh, from real estate agent point of view, we can tell you what's current market value, right? It's nothing to do with how much to replace your home because uh, back uh, many, many, 2011, 2012, there was an owner uh, asked me to give a valuation for their home. They said uh, they want to sell 1.2. That was 2011, which is the market was really in in the uh, bottom. bottom you know? right. Yeah. I said, well, I wouldn't ask more than a million because uh, maybe below, you know, a million, nine, 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 probably uh, is a good starting point. But I don't think our house even get that high, probably maybe 900 or so. They were so offended. They said, Jane, look at my insurance policy. It says 1.2 million. What's wrong with you? Well, that's the, and that illustrates the concept of the cost. The market value is could and can differ from the replacement value. That's the cost to rebuild the home oftentimes can be more than the than the actual market value. And that seems to illustrate, uh, based on your example, I don't know what the home ended up selling for back in 2011, but if, if it... At if the they, end, they sold more, less, I mean, uh, at the end, it was less than 900, it was 800 something. Right. And they the, hired another yeah. agent, they, they tried a high number, and uh, tried a high number from 11, 12, I think at the final, they sold in 2013, when the market increased a little bit, but they still sell. And there's you two, know, and there's two still, rights, you were right, and also the insurance company yeah, is yes, right, right. Because the cost yeah. to rebuild it could very well have been 1.2 million based on the cost of the materials and things, but the market, the market's perception or value, is was only 900 thousand. That's right. Yes, at that point. But uh, you know that that that's that that's one part of it. Second part from what you just said, the example you gave, Ken, uh, the down street five house down, right? Um, they could have a different uh, floor plan. You know, for example, right, you could say, oh, you know, we have the similar, you know, we both have the uh, uh, split level, right, or by level, right. But the today's world, if the home building 50, 60, 70, even 80, right, they have a room like have to function for each room. So they separated it with a wall. So the down down five doors down, they could have a more open floor plan, or you have a more f- open floor. Recently, uh, we just leased a by level in East Brunswick, right? They sold much more than a neighbor. Why? They they had an engineer, they had uh, um, you know the um, the architect design, and uh, you know to open up the whole wall. 
you know, um, so the kitchen, the uh, the kitchen used to have a wall, you know, uh, separated from the living room and the dining because they open up the whole wall. So the kitchen, living, and dining mm-hmm. become one. So, right. so bright, so beautiful. And uh, that's, you know, the difference, even though your both home had the same company, same company did the renovation of your kitchen, just say, right. spend the same. Material, everything same because the floor plan different can create a different experience, experience. And the for the ex- buyers and the experience that the that the modern day buyer wants typically is the open floor plan. And That's if you right. don't have the open floor plan to create that, would cost it costs money and time and construction yeah, or, expense. Or they didn't so, even so that's a value. So consider. that has an inherent yeah. value added into it. That's why the one home in your example sold more than the other home that was the adjacent yeah. next yeah. to it. Yep. Same models with mm-hmm. the same year built, relatively the similar materials for yeah. the mm-hmm. used for the kitchen, et cetera. So absolutely. I think so, the third uh factor uh is could be the lighting. You know, the, if your house set on the angle like a northeast or northwest, you know, on the angle, so obviously you have a bit of lighting, right? But if your house purely uh facing south for example right so you normally the by and large a lot of family the kitchen is on the back in the back of the house so your back of the house the living room the the uh, family room and the, the uh, kitchen could be facing north if that happened the the natural light just not as good as facing you know south you know the the lighting is very important or the way to to make a difference say for example some home they may have a skylight so i mean or a you know, in that case, they or they had a large window, you know, above the door, front door. Some some family, they, when they do renovation, they put a large window and they give extra natural light. Once again, um, people preference change from time to time, right? Maybe in 70s, 80s. I remember even our house, dad and mom house, right? Yeah. And then you, uh, they, they, they liked the, 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 the departmental, uh, you know, the like the a compartmental. compartmental. I, think, I, I wouldn't just blame them. I would say that was a generation oh, that yeah. they grew up in. That was, <laughs> don't, don't throw them under, the, throw the whole group under the bus, but no offense to anyone, but that was, that, that was, the, the, that was popular in that time. Carpeting was popular. That's why the homes the, built in the 50s have the hardwood floors. They were built with it, but they were immediately carpeted over in the yeah. 60s, the 70s, and then when now nowadays when you when you have a home like that, what do you do? You rip the carpets up and you have you have a beautiful, beautiful hardwood, hardwood floor. floors underneath. Yeah, they so, they just like uh, make yeah. the room smaller and uh, you know uh, darker, you know in a way. But when you open it up, they give you the open today's world, and the preference for the buyer is the open floor plan. And, uh, you know, that that could be the difference as well. The lighting is very, very important uh, in today's life, right? I mean, uh, that that that's very, you know, when very hard sometimes to say how much the house worth unless, you know, the agent, professional agent like myself go into the home. You only can do certain research online, the size, you know, the of the lot, the size of the building and what type of home, colonial versus uh, bi-level ranch. You can do a lot of information online, but nothing can replace when the human experience go in and the feeling of the home. So that will, you know, have a great impact on the home value, the price. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times the people want to see the value. They want to see, show me the, show me the comp, show me what's sold in the neighborhood. And, you know, so you have to provide, obviously you have to have knowledge, be knowledgeable in that. What's, what's sold the last, in the relevant period of time, which could be the last six months or the last year. I mean, the market is always changing, but also what's, what's listed, what is the competition listing their homes for? Not that the list price is indicative of what it's going to sell for, but it gives some, some guidance to it. Indication. And then the age, that's why you rely the seller has to rely on their on the knowledge and the expertise of the agent to yes. provide them with the insight into you know why a home why another home sold more or less and you know with the market being what it was with the floor plan that's why the more homes the agent experiences actually visiting and previewing the more knowledge that they can share with the seller and you know the variables that you know could possibly explain the, the price differentiation 
That's very well said, Ken. Absolutely, that's a hundred percent. I mean, based on my personal experience, right? I we specialize in Central Jersey, uh, especially in East Brunswick area. Uh, since I got my license, fourteen plus years ago, I personally went in at least 90 plus homes, each home in East Brunswick area. So that would give me the lot of background information uh, in addition to the data you can see from the, the MLS, right? So a lot of time, why that house sold so high? Why that house sold so low? Maybe there's an explanation. So hire your local expert. That would help you to understand the market, understand the value. And uh, recently I had a lot of owner is a very, very um, a good. They asking me and uh, how many home I sold in the last uh, two years, for, for example, right? In that area. The question actually is pretty sharp. Think about it again. A lot of time agent can say, oh, I sold uh, 20 homes near, um, near your area, but in what time frame? Some agent could be in the business 30 years, if you're 30 years, so 20, versus, you know, uh, two years sell, you know, 20 is a different thing. So secondly, they ask for, you know, the, 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 the uh, property address so they can look it up and see uh, whether you have the local expertise. So therefore, hire the right agent, have the knowledge and this and the skill is very, very important to guide you to determine the true value. It's, it's, it's not a true or, or false. It's just it's an accurate, today's, today's, today's value. Today's what's just yeah. a market value. What, exactly. the, what the market what, is going to pay for the house. For what, the what house is, today. What a, I mean, uh, same house. Like last year in June, right? I mean, the market suddenly went up. The interest rate up to seven. Mm-hmm. So within a month, within a week, within a day, the market stopped. You know, so in that, if your house go on market that day, obviously worth much more, much less than three months ago or two months ago right. or a week so, ago. Yeah. So the real estate is, is cyclical, just like the stock yes. market. It's subject to the other economic factors, mainly the interest rate, the inventory, yep. um, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, the economy, f- the health of the of the An of event, the some big event events, happening. Yeah, yeah. Which, which could which could favor it or, or yeah. disfavor it. Yes. Which, uh, right. So there's a lot of different variables that go into determining the market price. That's All right. right. With that, we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back after these messages. Okay, welcome back to our show. Uh, so, Jane, we're covering the top three questions sellers should ask when they're getting ready to uh, put the house on the market. Okay, we covered number one. And a second important question is once you resolve uh, the market price and the correct list price to, to you know, to successfully uh, market the home is how are the question that the sellers need to uh, have um, answered by their agent is how is the how is my home going to be marketed? How are you going to get get the word out and and show off the house and get the get the qualified buyers attracted to come to, you know, see my house and and put offers in. That's right. This is a big topic, oh. Ken. Uh, maybe we should have a nice show just dedicated to this topic. We're going to dig in, in details because this is a huge topic, right? I personally believe if you have a very, very successful marketing um, plan, strategy, you're going to attract a lot of buyer. The more buyer you have, the more possible offer you have. The more offer you have, the more the seller can choose from. In, in term of the price and the terms. So obviously the price is not everything, the term equally important. I think we should dedicate a, a pro, you know nice week. Right. So to, why don't we just why don't we just that. touch on some of the, why don't we give why don't we whet the listeners' appetites with a little bit a little bit of a touch <laughs> on what the some of the some of the marketing tools are which are not which yeah. are not great secrets. There's obviously obviously the social media which is a broad thing. We're going to touch upon that in depth the next show. But we have very everything from the um, from the Facebook to the the LinkedIn to the all the Instagram TikTok. All those are can be useful um, yes. ways to market the house. Um, that's one. So social media is, is a very big presence and yep. you know, mm-hmm. boosting the house and on different things. Uh-huh. Obviously, putting it on the on the list, the um, the multiple list system for the for the yes. location, you know, to get the word out to the agents um, you're going to be doing. You can do traditional newspaper, um, you know, 
There's not the, many people on traditional news. Not many, not many people do it, but it is still yeah. an, av- it is still an yeah, avenue yeah. for some select advertising, maybe yeah. to a, the uh, language uh, wise, the culture wise, may be useful. Yes. Right. And, also and then the, we can't forget your favorite one, which you're going to expand upon, <laughs> of course, the uh, open, open house, house, which is still a, this is still a people business. So yeah. that's you want to invite people to come in. So the more by doing an open house, you create opportunity for people to come and and, and see the home during a during an open window of time, typically on the weekends and sometimes yeah. uh, you, in evenings too. You're talking and, about uh, people and, business, even the uh, agent to agent promotion and uh, reach out to buyer base. That's equally important. Right. But yes. anyway, stay tuned for next uh, next Sunday show. We're gonna we're gonna devote uh, exclusively to the social media and break the. Uh, have an in-depth discussion on those all those different the types marketing of strategies. marketing strategies, yes. right? All right, so let's move on to then the third important question that you have to ask that a seller has to ask, and that's how actually ask uh, to themselves. Ask to themselves. Yes. Well, yeah, these are this all questions more, to themselves. For, yeah, the third yeah. one is like the first and second. You can ask the a, a realtors agent, you know, this, and the, the and the first one is more like to both, right? The second is more like to the agent question about uh, how you're gonna right. market. Well, that's called the third important question or, or yeah. topic or what they yes. should self-reflect mm-hmm. on, which would be yeah. how comfortable the, they are with the with the uh, realtor that they're going to choose. Yes, that's, and uh, if you mm-hmm. when you choose someone to represent you, right, you really have to a uh, few factors to consider. Number one, you have to absolutely no doubt in your mind. You have to trust the person. So, in my opinion, right, the skills, the knowledge, they all they all they all good to have. They must have. But the number one thing is you have to. No doubt in your mind, you can trust your agent. And then, Jane, so the question a lot of listeners might be saying is, okay, well, I just, they may not necessarily know the the agent that that's coming to them prior to their initial meeting, whether it be on the phone or whether it be in person. Let's say it's in person. So in, a, in the span of, of um, 15 minutes or 30 minutes, they may be saying, well, how, how can I tell, how, how do I know if I can trust you um, as the agent? How do they, they just, how do you, how would you, how would you answer that? If for you know, people? that that's a very so, good question, Ken. First of all, I mean, from talking to the agent, ask about the opinion on the home value and on their strategy, you can see whether they just know in the surface, just to tell you everybody else no comment or they more sort of like care about you, put you first, and uh, from your perspective, they're helping you. And to give you an example, Ken, I went to uh, meet the owner the other day, and uh, the owner said that they had agent interviewed a few agents, right? And a few agents, they they just felt they just want to get the listing. They just they just want them to to hire them to. They never bothered to ask them what what they try to achieve, where they're gonna go, what they what 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 they plan for their family future, right? So that's one of the indications. So when they met me, they at the end they recommended by the previous agent, uh, a family parents agent. I was their parents agent. So they they met me, and the first thing I asked, I said, once you sell the house, what you plan? Where are you going, right? I I spent a lot of time make sure they understood. Right. So I said, selling your house is my profession. It's no problem. I have no issue to sell your house. But where are you going to go? Right, because you have to have the exit plan. Yeah. And a lot of a lot of the uh, sellers that haven't done this process in 20, 30 years may mm-hmm. may not realize that once you sell the house, they may not they may assume that they can said they have time after the closing that mm-hmm. ha- that has happened before. Where sellers said, oh well, I'm going to need an extra 10, 20 days, or you know, after I close, I'll find something. Mm-hmm. But they don't realize that when you sell the house, it's a contract, and then when the closing date comes, you know, you have to be moved out and it has to be broom clean broom clean condition so it's a it's you know so a lot of times you have to ask those questions so you make sure that the seller has carefully thought out the the, the process of relocating but can further so, to what you just said right in this example I just gave after talk to them I tell them don't sell I don't uh, think in their best interest what they try to achieve may not be a may, may seems good idea but it may not be getting the result they truly looking for. So that what you know, the realtor um, you chose is always put your best interest first. 
you know, you got trust, you have that trust in there. So because during the transaction, right, there's always up and down, there's the issues. So once you trust your agent would be always there for you, helping you, that's going to reduce a lot of your anxiety. Another example I can give is uh, we had a um, home sale with an attorney review. Suddenly the buyer changed mind, canceled because the parents didn't like it. So mm -hmm. they canceled. So the sellers were probably know, heartbroken or upset yeah. and disappointed because they're excited. Once you have an accepted offer, it goes to attorney review. But like we covered, attorney review is an op is, is like the Wild West. Anything can happen. The deal can, the, the yeah. contract can be solidified. It can be, it can be uh, canceled by either side. So, and in this case, it was one of those one of those illustrations where the buyer either decided for mm -hmm. whatever reason, maybe no, an, yeah, maybe, the parents, maybe a parent, an in law, or yeah, or, or, or no relative, reason. or they just yeah. changed their mind. They felt they overpaid, so they decided we're just going to nix the deal. And yeah, so that's why when I text the owner in the morning, and uh, I know they were very upset, so I called them lunchtime. Actually, <laughs> she was uh, uh, very emotional, and uh, I have to say to her because I understand why you're afraid because you you have not purchased, uh, you know, based on this one to be sold and uh, trust you know i have to calm her down explain to them you're not gonna lose the other house trust me and we still have a time frame and uh, reiterate it right i mean things happen but but hang on there we'll go through this you know trust me i will bring i'll land this plane safely you know and on time so after you know uh couple of uh, uh conversations they come down so sure enough after two weeks we got a you know, not a buyer, better deal. So we close successfully, but still, right? Trust is very important, especially during the home ins uh, home inspection negotiation and uh, all other matters, right? If the if you can trust the agent, do the best for you, and uh, you know that would definitely uh, make it a much smoother transaction. There. Right. Yeah. You and know. I yeah, absolutely. And I think a second uh, equally important um, a factor or a tribute would be the passion, how passionate or how much the how how passionate the agent is about the house, how much he or she believes in yes. the house and is, is excited. I mean, you could call it passion. You could, you could call it excitement, but you have to have that. You and I think you have an example of that of that situation where two agents were competing for the house, but yeah. one of them was had the skill set, the knowledge, and the and the proven past results, whereas the other one was also a skilled agent, but not necessarily a local uh, agent. Yeah, in the, this case, Ken, just as you briefly uh, explained, right? For the seller, there's no right or wrong answer, right? So if you want, you know, people, some people like apple, some people like orange, the both for you, different flavor, and uh, you have to decide. Once you know the both agent will have your um, best interest at heart, and then you have to decide because that's come back to the seller personality. If you are very strong mind and, uh, you know, in that case, if the uh, you like the agent, you like the way she is or he is, so maybe it suits you better. But if you pretty much hire a person hands off, maybe the more proven record agent may be better for you because that agent can take the task and complete from beginning to the end. So in, in his or her way, based on the experience and the skill. So that's not right or wrong answer. That's why I said the third uh, factor is the seller have to do a lot of soul searching to see what they're looking for in the agent. Right. And all that could come up uh, could result in how well they connect with the with yes. the agents too. That's I mean, it could right. be, it's a combination of all those things, but at the end of the day you have to be able to communicate uh, with your agent and and understand, uh, you know, have a good on good the same stream, page. be on the same page and you know kind of click or connect however you want to put it, yep. right? Sometimes so, you will speak yep. the same language, but but, but if you you and I often have it right, yeah. we 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 read uh, we we watch the same show and then right. we get a different uh, right. uh, meaning out of it, right? So that's the same thing. Even though the language is the same, you have to make sure you and your agent are on the same page, understand each other. Right, and you have the common goals, and you're working yes. together mm -hmm. to achieve the result of yeah. selling the house. Mm -hmm. Right, it has to be a. You know, and lastly, yeah. I think your agent has to be very detailed and hands-on. So I often get a phone call, the 
seller say, Jane, if I hire you, after that, do I talk to you or do I talk to your team? Do I talk to everybody else? I say, no, I'm very uh, controlling person. Uh, Once we sign the uh, agreement, you talking to me anything about your home, your concern, a showing and a strategy and uh, all the diff- no big and small, you talk to me. The only time you talk to my office is the you need more booties, right? And uh, or you you know any admin side, but right. majority you know time you talk to me, uh, especially when we get an offer, you want to discuss each offer, you want to discuss about which one to choose and how the process going. And that's, you know, talk to the agent. So make sure you have that agreement up front. That agent who you sign with is the agent going to hold your hands from the beginning to the end. Yeah. Obviously, I'm not saying that agent do every single thing for you, but when you need something. But the major you, steps you should, of the way, which yeah. would be following up with the, the mortgage commitment, yeah. um, negotiating, mm-hmm. resolving the home inspection yeah. issues, um, f- again, following yeah. following up on the whole the whole process, making sure that the, you know, the, you're moving towards the closing date, that sure. there's no... Sure, yeah. In a nutshell, when you call that agent, <laughs> make sure that person will call you back. So that's very important. That's important to a lot of my client. So I always always have very close relationship with my client, but uh, that's, that should be one of the consideration before you hire uh, a real estate agent to represent you. Right. And also the detail as well, right? You have to really very, very detailed the project as you just mentioned, right? There's a lot of steps. You have to take the right. photo, make sure it's perfect. You have to put on market, a home inspection. Uh, you have to do the social media, deposit, the videos. And everything. Get it promoted before yeah. you right, mm-hmm. make sure the showing instructions are clear. Um, you know, yep. this agent has a lot of responsibilities from from the be- very, be- from that first initial uh, introductory meeting until the, until actually post-closing because there's things right. that come up after the closing, maybe mail or things that didn't get delivered. So you're, you have a, you're building a very long-term relationship with, with your uh, uh, seller client. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And then we're almost out of time, but what do you say to the, the uh, sellers that say, well, you know, I like you, but I also have a, I have a relative, I have a cousin that just got their license or I have a good friend that's got their license. They do it part time. I mean, you know, what do you say? I mean, to, once well, again, go know. back, go back to these three, right? right. Are, are your friend familiar with the uh, local, you know, local yeah. real estate market? Do they, can mm-hmm. they come up with the right strategy, pricing strategy? And, and do they have ability and knowledge, uh, knowledge and also and the, the time, skill, too, the because, time yeah, to, if, do the, uh, right. to do the marketing, carry out the marketing strategy? And can they help you to manage? managing each step of the way from the beginning to the successful closing. So that's all very important, very detailed. Yes. All right. Very good, Jane. Thank you so much. We're out of time. We'll see everyone next week. Thank you. Thank you.